Hey, um, this video is about having a personal relationship with God and we can only have a personal relationship with God if we are born again and the Bible says that we must be born again. So in order for us to have any kind of personal relationship with God, we have to actually know God because we have to understand that Jesus came to die for our sins and that through that we are reconciled to God. So we believe that Jesus died for our sins, we believe that he rose again, and we believe that we believe that we are sinners and we are only saved by grace through the act of Jesus dying for us so that we can have a personal relationship with God and be reconciled to him, be born again, filled with his spirit and have a proper relationship with God and be changed from the inside out and are, we're no longer ours but we are his and he's in charge of our lives. And basically it's so important to have a personal relationship with God because there are a lot of people that study the Bible, that study the scriptures, but they have no personal relationship with God. They have no testimony. They have no proof that they have a personal relationship with God in their lives. And it's very, very important that you have this. So like check yourself, like do, you, do I have a personal relationship with God? Is it like, is it something that is clear? Do I have a testimony of how I met him? Do I have a testimony of how he changed my life? I mean, some people have been Christians, you know, from an early age and they might not know exactly, well, you should know exactly when really uh, you met God because usually it's quite a big event, but, but granted, if you're little, when you meet God, you might not have as significant experience, but you should be able to have clear evidence in your life, a testimony of how he's changed you. You should be able to have some proof of um, specific answered prayer, miracles, the supernatural, uh, dreams, visions, uh, anything in the spiritual realm that you've seen. Um, you, you know, it doesn't have to be all of these, but there should be specific things that you you can say, like that I've met God and when I met him, this happened and he changed me in this way. And when I speak to him, he answers me, you know, not necessarily audibly, not necessarily every time, but I know I have a personal relationship with God because I cry out to him and he helps me. And I know that he helps me because I can see his hand in everything. And I couldn't do it on my own. Um, there has to be evidence of the Holy Spirit. So when we're born again, we're filled with the Spirit. There should be evidence of the Holy Spirit in your life. The Holy Spirit should speak to you should convict you, should guide you, should teach you. There should be specific examples that you can tell me where you have been led by the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit does lead you to do things. So, for example, it doesn't have to be on a daily basis, it doesn't have to be a lot of examples, but there should be at least one example in your life where, I don't know, like you've been walking down the street and the Holy Spirit has said to you, Go and speak to that homeless person. Go and feed that homeless person. And it shouldn't be things that you think of. It's not It's not our minds. It could be like we're walking down the street and the Holy Spirit says, go and speak to that person over there and tell them a specific thing. And you would have never been able to do that by yourself. But it is God that spoke to you. Do you understand? This is not just reading the Bible. This is not just studying the scriptures. That's important. But if you read the very Bible that you're studying, you will see that those people, you know, had direct contact with God. God directly led them. And he still does that today. He has given us his Holy Spirit. You know, look at the book of Acts. Look at the early church. What happened when the Holy Spirit fell down upon them? This is not just, some people say that was only for that time, but I'm sorry, my life is proof of, of you know, con my life is contrary to that. The Holy Spirit still speaks to me now. The Holy Spirit still moves through me and through many, many Christians, many, many of them. 
Like the Christians that I know, my husband speaks in tongues, I speak in tongues, my husband has had visions, I've had visions, you know, my friends have had these things, you know, God has spoken to people in dreams, um, all kinds of things. Like this is normal, this should be a normal part of the Christian war. Because God is real and it's important to have a personal, proper relationship with him. Not just, not just reading the Bible as though it's like a book with no life, but it is alive. It's alive and if you don't know God properly, if you haven't received his Holy Spirit, if you're not led by the Spirit, this is a big problem. You're missing out. Like you really are. You're missing out hugely. You don't know, you don't have a personal relationship with God. I'm sorry. Like this is too frequent. Like there are some people that have been Christians for a very long time and they can't even tell me a single time that God has spoken to them about a single issue. That is very strange. Incredibly weird. Like a normal Christian walk, you're in communion with God all the time and God will guide you. You know, the Bible says, Proverbs 3, 3, 6 says, in all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. So how is he going to make your path straight and tell you which, which way you should go if he's not speaking to you? Of course, you're telling him, Lord, should I do this? Should I do this? Should I do this? And you're praying about it. And the path should be made straight because he should be speaking to you through the Holy Spirit and telling you where to go, what to do. Um, and it's not, a, you know, some people have it on a daily basis, but it depends how close you are to God. You might not have that on a daily basis, but you should have at least one example, at least some examples in your life where God is moving and speaking to you. Like, it's not a fake thing. Read your Bible. Like, look at the way God spoke to these people. Look at their lives. They were led by God himself. They didn't just read the scripture and guess which scripture applied to them. They were led by the God of the word. Um, then uh, John 10 verse 27 says my sheep hear my voice I know them and they follow me now if you are one of Jesus's sheep you should hear his voice not necessarily audibly but in your spirit you know whether that's through conviction whether that's through teaching whether that's through anything dreams visions whatever obviously if you get a dream or a vision you know you have to test the spirits and you can you know but God should be speaking to you directly, telling you about your purpose and what you need to be doing, you know? Like, not necessarily your purpose of your whole life, but just in that moment, you know, you might be walking down the street and God is using you for something. You might be sitting on a train and God leads you to, to speak to somebody or, you know, whatever. This is a normal part of the Christian war. This is not weird. This is not anything different than, you know, if, if God does not speak to you in any way, shape or form, then that is contrary to the Bible. Because if you read your Bible, the Holy Spirit guides them. And this is part of normal, the normal Christian walk. Um, you should know what God wants you to change ab about in your life. So you should know specific things in your life or specific characteristics that you have, specific behaviours that do not please God. And you should know which things God wants you to change about yourself. So you should know if God, you know, picks you up on bitterness, on forgiveness, or picks you up on certain things that you do, because you should feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Now, even if you're not in willful sin, there are still little things that God can pick, pick up on. For example, somebody commented on one of my videos yesterday that um, she was being a bit lazy and she uh, didn't put her rubbish in the bin, just put it next to the bin. And the Holy Spirit spoke to her and said, you have to put it in the bin. Don't be lazy. 
Yeah, so even if you're not in massive willful sin, God still should be speaking to you, even if it's about these tiny little things. God will speak to you, believe me. And you should know what things you need to improve on, what things God is, you know, speaking to you about. You should know this. Like, for example, I know my husband, I have a relationship with my husband, so I know the things that I do that don't really, like, please my husband. Or I know the things that if I don't do, you know, my husband will be a bit annoyed because I have a personal relationship with my husband. And it's not just, like, generic things that apply to everybody. You know, like, when you read the Bible, there's a lot of generic things that God doesn't like. But I'm talking specific things in your life you should know when God doesn't approve, when God doesn't like like it, because God should be speaking to you. Yeah, so these are all sort of proofs of having a personal relationship with God, being truly born again, filled with the Spirit, and God is leading you out, out from, out away from sin, from your old life, from your old behaviours, and he is constantly speaking to you, teaching you, taking you away from those, like refining you, um, taking, through, taking you through different things, helping you, and it's very, very personal, it's very intimate, and it's very, very real. So I just wanted to make this video about that, because, yeah, it does, it does annoy me when Christians think that God doesn't speak to them, when the, you know, the Holy Spirit is, I don't know, something on paper, doesn't move. The Holy, Spirit's, the Holy Spirit moves. If you want the Holy Spirit, you ask for it. Believe me, you will get it. If you ask for it, you know, from the heart. So, yeah. Thank you.